So let's talk about McDonald's. Um, a McDonald's franchise in uh, the San Francisco area is closing shop. Why they're closing shop? For whatever reason, whatever reason you got, that's probably why they're shutting it down. Uh, but all, overall, we understand that the cost of doing business has just gotten too much, right? And when a business has gotten to a point where they're not um, you know, making enough profit, they're going to shut it down. And we've seen this a lot in, in, in the California area, right? We've seen a lot of businesses doing the same thing. They're, they're, they're shutting their business down. Um, they're increasing the prices of their goods. They're laying people off. They're reducing hours. They're doing whatever they can in order to you know, operate their business. And it's gotten to a point for this franchise where they just said, you know what, it doesn't make sense, so we're going to shut it down. And we've seen this all over California, right? Even I, I did a video about how Google, um, um, off, a Google office in San Francisco, they're leaving this prominent building, right? I think it's what, three, 300,000 square foot. Um, it's, a, it's a big, very nice building, and, and they're leaving. They're not renewing their lease for, for next year. So they're going to be out there um, leaving. And, and, and this is the, the trend that you see a lot of businesses going. If you're not making it business friendly, they're going to leave. Right, business like businesses are, go, are getting to a point where it just said it doesn't make sense. Right, I can't I can't turn a profit. Then I just I gotta shut down. Right, I can't I can't operate the business. I gotta move on and do something else. And that's what you're seeing a lot happening in California. So I'm just gonna play this video about the news um, of them explaining uh, what what's going on. And, and I think it's gonna be one of the, the the franchise owner. He's gonna be speaking as well. The McDonald's at Stonestown Galleria served its final Happy Meal today. Franchise owner Scott Roderick told me the decision to close was gut-wrenching, but the community came out to show their support in recent days. It was pretty overwhelming. The number of emails and phone calls that the restaurant team and I got of people sharing their family stories, uh, the moments they spent at that McDonald's. Roderick says out of the eight McDonald's his family owns, the Stonestown location by far is the most expensive to operate. When it came time to renegotiating their lease, he says taxes, rent, and mall fees were just too much. Combine that with the state-mandated $20 an hour minimum wage for fast food workers and more. The post-COVID economic hangover in San Francisco, concerns about inflation on, on both sides of my front counter, uh, public safety, job creation, and economic sustainability, the cost of living in the city of San Francisco, all of these issues uh, that are my issues are also my customer issues at Stonestown. A different restaurant concept is expected to move into the space later this year. So you heard that, right? Um Look at he got he has he owns what eight franchises so look at he's gonna be okay right he's gonna have money but but you understand like overall like this hurts you know the the city overall right we understand like the impact this is this is going to have especially when it comes to like jobs uh, tax revenue um, you know just business as well like and, and I know for a lot of people like they don't really care right you don't care it's McDonald's right they're, they're selling poison anyways right and but I think it's bigger than just um, uh, McDonald's right this is just showing you the overall um, environment for uh, you know, economic environment when it comes to businesses operating in places like California like the, it's just not business friendly and you, and we understand that especially when you're not business friendly like a lot of these businesses employ a lot of people right they give people jobs right they bring in tax revenue they bring in businesses they bring they bring a, an environment where people are going to come around and, and 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 give the city money but when you're not being friendly to the businesses you're, you're, you're you you see what he talked about he said how the rent, uh, the rents are increasing, taxes are increasing, insurances are increasing. He talks about theft, uh, wage increases, right? These are not conducive to operating a successful business, right? These all put all together going to say it gets to a point where it doesn't make sense to do, to do this, right? And, and, and I think for a lot of people, they don't really understand, especially like, let's say if you're like a landlord, right? Like if you're just a regular landlord who owns a property, a lot of people think landlords are greedy, right? They are, they're greedy. They're increasing the prices of the rent. And what they don't understand is they don't see the back end where taxes and insurance are increasing as well, which is why they got to transfer that cost to, uh, to the tenant, Right. But of course, the tenant doesn't see that. All they care, all they care about is like, why are you increasing my rent? But everyone has a cost. Right. And we look at the, 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 the person that, you know, obviously they're renting it out to. You're looking at their cost they're, I'm sure their expenses have gone up as well, which is why they're, they're increasing the, the, the cost of, of rent for that for that for that franchise owner. So it all trickles down. It has, it has a domino effect. Like once you're, you when, when you have economic policies that are not that are not conducive to businesses, it's going to affect everyone. Right. And, and, and this is not what you want to see. You want to make sure you see businesses thriving because you want to see people that 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 employ these people um, that you want people to have jobs. You want people to be able to, you know, um, so, you know, 
provide for themselves economically, physically, financially. And when when you see businesses shutting down, um, that's not good. And I get it. like people are like us oh, McDonald's. No one cares, right? Like I'm a, I'm gonna just eat at home anyways. But like I said, it's just not about McDonald's. This is just about the overall economic environment in places, especially like California. So let me read this article real quick. It says San Francisco McDonald's shutters after 30 years and latest casualty of $20 minimum wage gut wrenching, right? So, all right. So it says a long time San Francisco McDonald's has become the latest casualty of California's new $20 minimum wage, according to reports. The McDonald's uh, at the Stonetown Gal- uh, Galleria shopping mall, about eight miles southwest of downtown San Francisco, was permanently shuttered Sunday after more than 30 years of uh, servicing the area. Uh, this is gut-wrenching day for my family, franchise owner Scott uh, Roderick said. Uh, Roderick blamed the closure on a number of factors, uh, but said the newly rolled out law hiking the state minimum, wide, minimum um, wage from uh, $16 to $20 an hour pushed the business over the edge. Right. So it's not just the minimum wage. It was a lot of things. Right. It was the rents. I mean, obviously, the rent hikes, uh, tax insurance, whatever um, was obviously, you know, affecting it. But once you put over once you increase the, the, the cost of labor, obviously, that pushed it over the edge and just got to a point where it said, you know what, this doesn't make sense financially. So it says, all right, we keep going. It says, coupled with the landlord refusing to negotiate on long term rent, high property taxes and a small and a mall tenant fee all of which combined to make the Stonestown McDonald's the most expensive location to create out of its uh, restaurant company. The new wage hike was too much to keep the lights on. All right, so it has been a pleasure for my entire team, and I served uh, and I and I just served the 19th Avenue and um, Ingleside neighborhoods for more than 30 years. The franchise owner said in a note uh, posted on their door uh, open closing. All of our valued team members have been um, offered opportunities to continue working with a uh, uh, with my mes- restaurant company at, at a nearby uh, McDonald's. Roger said since the new minimum wage was introduced on April 1st, uh, nu- uh, numerous businesses have closed up shop across California. One recent closure included an Arby's roast beef uh, that's been a fixture on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood for 55 years, which shut its doors earlier in, in June. And, and look, at, if you're if you're government, right, you see these politicians, you see this happening. Like you got to get to a point where you say, all right, this is not good. We're losing we're losing businesses. We're losing tax revenue. Um, we're losing people. People are losing jobs. This cannot be good overall for the economic environment. Um, it gets to a point where you say, all right, we have to, you know, maybe, re, you know, be less stringent on these on these policies that's making it hard for businesses to operate but then again maybe this is what they want right maybe they want more people depending on government gives them more power whatever you want to call it uh it's never a good thing so it says uh with inflation food costs have gone way up and the 20 dollars an hour minimum wage has been the nail in the coffin general manager gary hush uh previously uh, told the loss in his time Taco chain Rub- Rubio's cost, Coastal Grill was forced to close dozens of locations across the, the state in, tu- in June, um, only to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy days later. The fast food chain of uh, Foster's Freeze also shuttered a location near Fresno and directly blamed the new minimum wage uh, for its demise. Uh, in other instances, the cost of raised workers' pay has been passed directly onto the consumers. Chains like McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, Starbucks, and Chipotle have raised their prices by up to 8% in California. In turn, customer visits to such chains have decreased. And that's exactly what you get, right? These are, these are the consequences of poor policies, right? You got theft, crime, high taxes, high insurance, high, um, um, po- uh, high cost of labor, making it impossible for anyone to live, right? And the cost of living for everyone has just gone up and making it impossible. But, but these are, the, these are the, the, the consequences of bad policies, right? Once you continue to, um, especially when it comes to businesses that, that actually have a, a real impact on e- economics, um, you know, people, it employs a lot of people, and this, you're going to make it hard for anybody to operate. You're going to make it hard for not just the business person. Because like I said, he owns eight franchises. He's going to be fine. But what about the people that, that employ these business? Obviously, they could probably find other jobs elsewhere. But overall, when you, employ, when you put these policies in place, they're going to make things tougher for people. So yeah, so those are my thoughts. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I Make sure to leave a comment down below. Hit the like button and share. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe. All right, so you guys take care. Have a good one. Later.